quick overview. The fog lights have been installed. You can see the switches in here. Um, so I think the switch itself is kind of iffy. Uh, I noticed if I put it in a certain way, it clicks easier, but it doesn't look right with the rest of it, but it, it clicks easier. You get a better click out of it. So that's something I may have to, maybe it's a design flaw they need to work on, but just a heads up on that. And as you notice, it doesn't light up. So the way that it's wired, if you choose to, if you, wi if you want to wire it, where it's always got a, a you know consistent power source and you can control it and have it on whenever you want. Um, basically, when it, when it comes to a switch, you do not ground the switch because if you ground the switch to a consistent power source, that the the um, the switch will stay lit when even when the car is off. Um, so that for me, I wasn't comfortable with that. So um, what I did was uh, I just disconnected the uh, negative. Uh, negative part to the switch so that way it doesn't just stay illuminated um, but it still functions and everything with the car on and off you just have to make sure that you double check your car you know when it's on or off all right i'm gonna take a look at this wiring harness so i think i got the pretty much the basic gist of it um it does come with instructions as well wiring harness um this is for the switch we call this the interior uh, harness um, well, it's a switch. So here's your power tap. Uh, this will go basically what powers a switch and the uh, trigger. This is the negative terminal, and this is the switch which will go out of the firewall. So you have your switch obviously for the interior, should pop out. So here's the main harness for the front. So be, I'm, I'm guessing this definitely goes to the battery terminal right here, but it's positive. So we got to get a, a ring terminal and that goes to the battery. And then we have your, your relay here. And this is the other connection part that we will run through the, uh, probably gonna run alongside the fender. Hopefully it's long enough. And we'll get it through there. You're gonna have your ground, that negative goes to the battery as well. And then you're gonna have your two connection points uh, for your fog lights, left and right. So, yep. So let's uh, see if we can get this at least pre-set up. All right. So, took the bumper off. There are 10 10 millimeter screws on the bottom. There are two little pop clips here. Uh, these little black on the side fenders and that's it and then the bumper just kind of pops off these little pieces kind of clip in um, all right so I do have the fog light mounted uh, you got to remove these screws to take out the original covers um, these are kind of a pain in the butt just keep your eye on them but there's about let's see one two three four four screws holding these in Make sure you take those four out, and then these just pop right out. You're gonna have to use a little force, but don't be afraid. Um, uh, to reinstall, you wanna install the fog housing first, like that, and then you wanna go ahead and use the bulb or install the fog light. They are marked, so the adjuster is facing down, as you can see right here. Uh, but on the lens, it is marked as right for R as well, too. Um, so that's what it looks like there on. But yep, so now I'm working on this side, getting that done and see what we could do. So the best way I recommend to reinstall these is to start, I mean, when you remove them, you wanna start by pushing these out, uh, push little tabs out. It's got, you know, one, two, three, four, four little main tabs you gotta push out. Well, actually just mainly three. This, this here, one, two, three. That one just a clip on the bottom. Um, you want to push that out. So you want to go back in reverse order. When you reinstall the housing, you want to start from the bottom here, get those two clipped in, and then you can, this little trim piece, <clears throat> this trim piece around the grill right here, let me see if we can see it. So this piece right here, this actually pops out. So it only pops out in this bottom corner. So you pull it out and you can fit the fog light in there. And then they should all snap in. It should look like this when it's all lined up and ready to go. And uh, 
take our fog light. So take a look here. So if you look at it, if you can see on that bottom corner right there, bottom left, see that L, that means for left, and see this adjuster here, that's gonna face on the bottom, so it's gonna face like this on the left side. So adjuster on the bottom, and you know, it's gonna face like that. It's gonna mount using these uh, three holes. You can reuse your, reuse your screws. Uh, the kit does come with uh, several black screws as well. Uh, but yep, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these on. All right, both fog lights installed, and then I just reuse the black screws that came with the kit. Make sure you screw all the pieces back in to where they were to hold the housing in place. So those are good. All right, so now uh, we're gonna get the wiring started. So we'll start uh, see what we got with the wiring. All right, so it looks like it's got plenty of room so far. Pre-wiring, the best route I would say is go and follow this, this hood latch cable line. So I got this going up underneath, up here, traveling up to here. So right now I have it set in place here. I know I had a negative and positive. I'm gonna be about a battery. And then we have the main switch, this wire. Hopefully it's long enough, but hopefully this will stretch over, you know, far enough. We can feed it through the fender where it can reach and uh, connect to the inside part of the switch which is I'm hoping, like I said, in here, once we open that up, we can uh, get access to that, uh, that panel. Um, as you can see, I got this car, this side of the car jacked up um, because I'm gonna remove that wheel and basically we're gonna remove this inner fender well and hopefully this around here, there'll be an area I'm hoping there'll be a grommet where we can actually wire in and get that uh, fog light switch wired in there. But yeah, so this is what I have so far. It's on the jack stand on one side. I'm gonna take this wheel off, expose the, uh, you know, expose the inside fender liner, and hopefully we can get some wiring through there. That'd be awesome. Um, but yep, so we shall see. All right, got the wheel off. So let's get ready to start uh, taking this little panel off and see what we got back here. So we got it out. So unfortunately, I don't see any easy access in the fender well. Like I said, most videos I saw, they did have some sort of access, but this, I don't see anything wire-wise going in there besides up there, up here. So I'm wondering if we could get into there and get wire in, that would be perfect. So, so we're gonna see. Basically, you wanna use this tool right here that we used, this little wire tool. What we did was that grommet popped right out and we took this and we fished it through the hole, have someone else kind of pull it through. And then once they're inside the car and they see that, they're gonna you know, cut the other end of the wire, tape it to this end, and then we pulled it out to bring it out to us. Um, so we can connect the wire. That little grommet pops right out. Stick this little tool in there. Um, or if you have like a wire hanger, anything, anything that's kind of flexible and sturdy, fish it right through there and then tape the wire really good from the inside and then pull it out through. And then that's how you connect uh, your switch. Uh, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. So the next thing I'm gonna try to figure out is what to tap into from the inside interior or for an interior fuse panel. So that's where we're going next. Once we figure that out, then we'll be good. All right, heads up, when removing this panel, um, basically you wanna remove and pop out this bottom one first. This bottom one gets popped out. Once you pop out this, then this can come out. Um, but just so you know, so when you reinstall, pop this piece in first, and then this part overlaps and holds that in. Uh, but yeah, so just a heads up on that. All right, so we do have the panel pulled apart. These just pop out, there's four clips. Just be careful not to pull too hard because you got uh, you know, wire connectors back there. But I pulled it just enough so we can get the, our switch up through the bottom, and then we're gonna pop out one of these covers and install the uh, switch. All right, so got it installed, and also noticed inside there were two other 
wire is kind of pre-wired in there, but I don't know if they're hooked up to anything. But uh, either way, I, yep, so she's in now. And now we just got to ground. We got to pretty much install the ground and then tap into our ignition. As far as for the ground for the switch, if you look on top at the fuse box, there's a, there's a 10 meter meter bolt that kind of holds everything in place. So we're just going to use that bolt and ground it to that. Um, there's a bolt up there too. But yeah, so let's uh, let's get that grounded. All right, so just an update. Um, went to the auto store. So I don't have the fuse taps yet, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to use this method right here. Um, I, don't, I never had one of these tools, but it's a uh, continuity tester. And what it does, it lights up when it's detecting power. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to connect to the ground, turn on, and put the pin in one of these and see which one lights up. All right, so yeah, pretty excited. I'm glad to have one of these. I've always, I mean, I guess they're fairly cheap. It was like eight bucks. Got some extra wire just in case if I need to extend it to the battery, but probably not. So we'll see how that goes. Right now I got some breakfast. I'm gonna eat that first and then we'll get this situated. You basically just have to drop down this bottom uh, spot for the steering uh, column here. And to do that, it's pretty simple. You just turn the wheel to the top, expose the screw there, you know, unscrew that. And then on this side, one right there. And there's also one underneath on the bottom, right in the middle. So like, you, you'll be able to see it when, you, when you're underneath, but it's like, right, where are you? Ah, uh. oh, there it is. Yeah, it's down, it's, it's down there, but you can see it. So three Phillips head, and then just be careful uh, when you're uh, popping it down, just kind of pop the top part off and then the bottom part does come out um yeah just be careful when you're doing that once you remove it you'll be able to see the wire what i tapped into which was a yellow wire it was a constant power source and you know i just um you know i just wanted to uh, get it so i can control independently at all times so it's not just comes on with just the low beams on you know? wiring the fog lights um so yeah that's how you that's how you wire up the lights uh pretty excited um hope that helps and uh on to the next mod